In this video, we're going to take a look how to build out our Next.js top navigation header and footer components. So let's get started. But first, in our front end of our Next.js application, let's navigate to source data under loaders and let's create a new function that will be responsible for getting our global data. We're going to say export a sync function and we're going to call it get global page data. It will not take any params. And here we're going to construct our URL, const URL equals new URL. And it will take our path, which is API slash global and our base URL. Next, we have to define our URL.search params. And we're going to be using IQS library, which has that stringify method. And inside here, we're going to paste our populate that we wrote to get our data. If you still have your code from the interactive query builder, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that populate statement and paste it inside. And finally, we're going to return await fetch data and we're going to pass our, our URL params. Now that we have our get global page data, let's go ahead and navigate to our layout under source app layout and import it. So import get global page data and it's going to be from our data loaders. Fantastic. And now what we want to do is create the root layout component to be a async component. And right before the return statement, we want to await our get global page data. And let's go ahead and console log our global data to make sure that we're getting it. And here you could see my response. So we know that works. Wonderful. So now we could continue to create our components. Let's navigate to our components custom folder and create a new file called logo.tsx. And this is where our logo text is going to be stored. We're not going to add any images here, but you could go ahead and do so in the future if you like. We could find the code snippet in the blog post that is linked in the description below. So under building our header and footer with Strapi, you'll be able to find all the code snippets. We already covered how to model our data in the previous video, but if you keep scrolling down, you're going to find the code snippet logo component that we are working on right now. Go ahead and copy the code and inside our logo.tsx file, let's paste it in. Reviewing the code, we just have a simple icon and we passing text as a prop. In the future, if you like, you could replace it with your image, but we're not gonna do that now. Now that we have our logo.tsx file, navigating back to our custom folder, let's create a new file and we're going to call it header.tsx. Scrolling down farther in the article, you're going to find the header.tsx component snippet. Let's go ahead and copy it. And the reason why I decided to write a blog post first is so you don't have to watch me type all of this ahead of time. So we could just take a look and review the code. This is a simple React component that pulls in a logo that we created to which we pass our logo text as props. And then we have our link that's going to be populated by CTA button URL. So now what we could do is we could use this component. So let's go back to our layout and inside the body, we're going to put our children in its own div, just like so. Let's paste the children inside and reformat. And now right before the children, let's go ahead and import our header component that we just created. And it's going to, for its data prop, take our global data that header. So now if we restart our application, if you haven't, and take a look at our front end, notice that you see our summarize logo text and our sign in button. Currently, if I click our sign in button, it redirects us to sign in and we see the generic 404 page. We will create a custom page later on. But for now, let's go back and create our footer component to finish up our landing page. So inside our code editor, let's navigate back to our components, custom, and create a new file called footer. 
TSX. Again, we could find our footer code inside the article that I shared. So find the footer.tsx component code, go ahead and copy it back in our VS Code. Let's go ahead and paste it. We're gonna quickly take a look through and see what we have here. Again, we're using basic TypeScript in order to be able to show the structure of the data that this component expects. We also have a function called select social icon. Basically what it does, it checks if the URL includes either YouTube, Twitter, or GitHub, and it will show the appropriate icon accordingly. And if you wanted to add additional social icon, you would just add it here. In this example project, I just used YouTube, Twitter, and GitHub. Then if we take a look at our footer code, we're using our logo for our middle, we're getting our text element. And then for our social links, we're mapping through our links. And here I am missing a key prop. So go ahead, let's add it now. So here in links before class name, we could say key and it's going to equal to link.id. Perfect. And now VS Code stops complaining and Let's go ahead and import this inside our layout right after the children div. We're going to import our footer and that's going to take us props, our global data dot footer. Navigating back to our front end. Now you see that we have amazing footer, which is pretty awesome. If you're wondering where our data is coming from, no surprise there. We know that it's coming from our Strapi application. If you look under our content manager, under global, we could see that our header data is being stored inside our Strapi app. Now, one thing that I wanna show you, after we refactored our code in our loader.tsx file, we again disabled the no caching for production. So I wanna revisit that in a second. But what this means is that if I make a change made with love by Paul and click save, and go back to our application and refresh, if I take a look at the footer, this message doesn't change. That's because this is being cached. And if we need to update it, we need to revalidate it. When we deploy our application in the future, here at Strapi, we will be able to navigate to settings and we have this webhooks option. We'll be able to create a webhook that will allow us on content update to fire a hook that will trigger a versatile action to revalidate our data. But in development, that's not something we're gonna do. And so before I'll show you how we're going to solve this, the first thing that I wanna say is that everybody should go ahead and read data fetching, caching, and revalidation in Next. This is a very important piece of documentation that you should familiarize yourself with. But if we scroll down, you will find a section on opting down. In the past videos, we took a look at how to use the cache no store function. If you don't wanna use this, you could actually update your cache manually by deleting it. For instance, I can go ahead inside my project, inside the .next.js folder and delete the cache folder. Then I could restart my application. And if I refresh my front end, Norris now we see made with love by Paul. But that's a manual process. What you can do is you could run a script. Whenever you run yarn dev, it's gonna go ahead and remove that cache folder. And that's what I have done in the past. So here I have a yarn clear command. And if you take a look what clear does, it goes ahead and removes the .next folder, including the cache files. But what we're going to do, instead of doing this, we're going to use another method that exists in Next.js called unstable no store function. So what we're able to do is we're able to import this function and use it. And this will go ahead, opt us out from Next.js caching. And what's awesome, we could do it on component level. So going back to our, our application, let's go inside our loaders.ts file. At the top, I'm gonna go ahead and import that unstable no store, and we're going to use it. In our loader.ts file, we have this global fetch data function that we're using. If I put the no store here, this is going to be called on every request and none of our data is going to be cached. But what I could do instead of doing this, I could only pass this function 
in places where I want my content to be dynamic. So here under get global page type data, I'm going to go ahead and pass no store. So now all of the content inside the top navigation is going to be dynamic. I'm not saying this is what we're going to keep, but we're just going to do it here as an example in our development mode. So now if I go ahead and restart my application and back inside our content manager, I'm going to go ahead to our global page and I'm going to go ahead and update this again made with love by Paul B. Bratz, why not? I'll use half of my last name, click save. And now when we take a look at our front end and refresh, notice that this is automatically updated. Again, I suggest you read the docs to learn more about it. And now that our application takes shape, that is pretty awesome. The one thing that I wanna show you when we navigate to our sign-in page, since we didn't create it yet, we get this 404 page. So the few things that I want to show you in the next video is how to create a custom 404 page or what happens when we're switching from page to page. Let's see a loader spinner and also what happens if we get an error. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.